A ceramic coating is the highest form of paint protection you can have on your motorcycle or any vehicle for that matter. And it can cost a thousand dollars or more to have a ceramic coating applied to a motorcycle. But I'm about to do it in my own garage on my own motorcycle and I'm going to show you how I do it. But there's one last step that I have to complete before that magic serum goes onto my paint. So let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Garage Ultimate Motorcycle Detailing Series. In this series, I'm covering the four steps that I'm using to ceramic coat the paint on my motorcycle. Now those four steps include step one, washing the motorcycle, step two, decontamination, and now we're finally ready for step three, which is the polishing portion. If you missed my videos on steps one and two, I'll put links to those videos in the description of this video and up above. In this video, I'm going to be working on my 2018 Honda Goldwing with pearl white metallic paint. However, the techniques, the tools, and the products used in this video should work with any brand of motorcycle or even car and truck for that matter. And Regardless of what kind of motorcycle you ride or what color the paint is, if you're passionate about motorcycles, don't forget to click that subscribe button down below and that notification bell. Now, the video comes with one warning before we get started. The techniques and the chemicals used in this video are specifically for vehicles with a glossy clear coat finish. If you have a motorcycle with a matte finish paint job, those surfaces require some special techniques, and honestly, I haven't been able to find a lot of information about how you do paint correction or ceramic coating on a matte finish. So you might want to do a little more research on that. As I've said before, I am not a detailing professional. I'm just a hobbyist who has a passion for keeping the cars and motorcycles that I have looking their best. Now, I have adopted the products, the methods, and the techniques of some reputable auto detailing professionals that I've been watching on YouTube for a couple of years. I also get a lot of information from my brother, who happens to be obsessive about maintaining his 2001 C5 Corvette, and he has years of experience on this subject. Now, this, if this is a topic that you're interested in, there are literally hundreds of videos on YouTube regarding auto detailing. So what is paint polishing, or what we sometimes refer to as paint correction? Well, obviously, it's the process of removing imperfections, scratches, swirl marks, and oxidation from your paint's clear coat. Now, you may recall from a previous video that the clear coat is the topmost layer of your paint job. The base coat just underneath that is the layer that contains the pigment or the actual color of your paint, and then below that is the primer. The clear coat is applied at the factory to protect the base coat from UV rays, scratching, fading, and to add high gloss appearance to the paint. Your clear coat is constantly being subjected to a variety of environmental conditions that can cause it to become damaged over time. UV rays can, over time, break down the UV inhibitors in the clear coat. Rail dust, brake dust, environmental fallout, acid rain, hard water spots, road salt, road tar, oily road film, bird droppings, gravel, tree sap, and even overspray from chemicals. Now, all these things can damage your clear coat. In addition to environmental elements, as if that wasn't enough, the clear coat can also be pretty easily scratched. The clear coat is relatively soft, and many clear coats can be scratched with nothing more than your fingernail. Just washing and drying your motorcycle can scratch the clear coat and cause swirl marks in the paint. Light scratches and swirl marks are much easier to see on dark surfaces, with black being the most obvious. A white or light colored surface won't show these scratches or the swirl marks as easily, but that doesn't mean they're not there. They're just harder to detect. Just wiping off your paint with a rag can scratch the clear coat. 
Any surface dust that's on the paint becomes like a fine sandpaper, not to mention any abrasive contaminants that might be on the rag before you wipe it off. Over time, these tiny little scratches and imperfections will begin to diminish the gloss and the appearance of your paint job. It'll just start looking kind of dull. And when we talk about correcting or polishing the paint, we're basically going to be using abrasive liquids with some specially designed pads on the paint to correct any of that damage. Now the goal is to improve the surface of the paint, to make it as smooth as we can, to increase the gloss and the overall appearance. Machine polishing requires the use of a random orbital polisher like the one that I'm using from Griot's Garage. And they're also sometimes referred to as dual action or DA polishers. The one I'm using on my motorcycle is a mini polisher that uses a 3 inch diameter pad. Now if you're polishing a car or a truck, you'd want a larger polisher that accepts a 6 inch pad. But for the small surfaces of a motorcycle, the 3 inch pad is really perfect. You can even get 2 inch pads for even smaller, tighter surfaces. But in this video, I'm just going to be using the 3 inch pads. The dual action polisher is specifically designed to prevent any damage to the clear coat from burning the paint. Because as this pad spins in a circle, the pad also sort of moves in a figure eight pattern, hence the dual action. And this prevents the pad from spinning in the same place for an extended period of time. Now some auto detailers or painters will use a high speed rotary polisher, but those machines are for professionals only. You could do some damage to the paint with one of those. Now, random polishers are also used by professionals, but they're safe for DIYers like me, and you get excellent results. Now, there are many brands of polishers on the market, and the prices are all over the map. Generally speaking, you get what you pay for. I have this one that I bought from my brother used, which is from Griot's Garage. It's an older model. They don't even make it anymore but I will include links in the description of this video to their current polishers. I've been using Griot's Garage products for many years, and so has my brother. And they have an excellent reputation for quality and great service. There are some other brands out there that cost many times more than the Griot's Garage polishers. But many of those would primarily be used by auto detailing professionals that do this sort of work every day. For the home guy, DIYer, this is a perfect system. The polisher has a hook and loop surface here, and then these foam pads are used to spread the compounds and polishes to the paint. And there's entire videos out there on YouTube that'll talk to you about the various types of polishing pads available and their different uses. But I'm trying to keep this video as simple as possible. For my purposes, I'm simply going to be using two different pads from Griot's Garage. Now, the orange one is designed to remove heavy scratches and imperfections, while the yellow pad is used for fine polishing and perfecting the surface. The orange pad is firmer, offers a more aggressive cut to the surface, while the yellow pad is softer and is more finer for the perfecting of the finish. Now today, we're going to be talking about two basic forms of abrasive liquids. The first one is referred to as a compound, which is the most abrasive formula and can be used to smooth out scratches, swirl marks, oxidation, chemical overspray, etc. These compounds actually cut into the clear coat to make it flatter and smoother, and there's many different brands of compounds on the market. Today, I'm going to be using the correcting cream from Griot's Garage, which is their kind of their medium duty compound used for paint correction. Now, Griot's also makes a fast correcting cream, 
which has an even heavier abrasive content, and it can cut faster or correct deeper scratches. But unless you have some really bad stuff in your paint, uh, correcting cream should be all you ever need. Right now, it's not so much important to focus on the brands. There's many good brands out there on the market. Just want you to focus on the overall concept of paint correction. These compounds make up the first stage of paint correction, after which we'll move on to a refining step to remove any light marring or scratches left behind by the correcting compound. So even though this compound is removing scratches from the clear coat, it may leave behind some hazing or marring of the clear coat, which needs to be addressed in the final step, which is to polish the clear coat, or what Griots refers to, refers to as perfecting. Now, these polishes are also abrasive, but the abrasive material is much finer. This perfecting cream from Griot's Garage I'm using that as my final polish before moving on to applying the ceramic coating. Now, if you have a brand new motorcycle or a vehicle where the paint is in extremely good condition and maybe you just have a few fine scratches or swirl marks, you could probably skip the compound step altogether and just use the polish. However, before you get started, you really should carefully inspect your paint surface first. I know when I picked up my brand new 2018 Goldwing from the dealer, brand new out of the crate, it came from the factory with some pretty serious marring on the paint on a couple of saddlebag lids and the rear fender. And this was before I knew anything about paint correction techniques. But fortunately, my brother's been working with polishes and compounds for years to maintain that 2001 C5 Corvette I told you about. When I rode my new 2018 Goldwing to West Texas for a visit just weeks after I bought it, he was able to use this, I believe he used the correcting cream and the polish to remove that marring from the paint. And this is where I actually got kind of excited about this whole world of auto detailing and paint correction. I was amazed that he was able to bring back the gloss to the surface that I was pretty much convinced was going to have to be replaced under warranty. In fact, one saddlebag lid did get replaced under warranty. However, typically, a brand new car or motorcycle should have paint that's in good enough condition that you may only have to use the perfecting cream or a polish to obtain a near-perfect surface. Also, it's not necessary to use the compound or correcting cream on the entire vehicle. I only use it on areas that have heavier scratches or marring. Therefore, you should go over your bike first with a bright LED light, check the surface for any heavy scratches that require the compound. Very light scratches or swirl marks can usually be removed just using the polish, or in my case, the perfecting cream from Griot's Garage. Now, it's very important that you complete that decontamination stage before you move to the polishing phase. I mean, think about it. You're going to have one of these pads spinning very rapidly on the paint during the machine polishing. Any contamination remaining in that clear coat is going to get picked up by this pad and be ground at high RPM even further into the clear coat. That's not good. So make sure you've completed the first two steps before you move to the correction and polishing phase. And I'm using the term polishing loosely as the general term, but that kind of refers to both the compounds and the finishing polishes in this case. Before we grab our compounds or polishes and be begin perfecting the paint, we need to do a little more prep work first. It's a good idea to get a good roll of masking tape, and we need to mask off all the trim pieces like the rubber parts and the black plastic parts that we don't want to get polish on. Otherwise, these polishes could leave a residue on these areas and potentially stain the black plastic or the rubber. So please take the time to properly prep the bike with masking tape before you begin polishing. Okay, that's enough. Let's get to the garage. 
I decided it might be a good idea to go ahead and remove the rear fender so I could get better access to the inside portion of these saddlebag covers. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get to these inside areas here so that I can do my ceramic coat. First, I'm gonna come in here with a clay bar and clean on both sides. It's really impossible to get in here very good uh, with this rear fender installed. So I wanted to go ahead and remove that, get that out of the way, and then I'm gonna come back and, and re-clay bar this because I wasn't able to really reach back in here uh, when I did my clay bar of the bike. And once I get that done, I'm gonna start doing some masking. I'm also going to remove these side covers because it's going to be very hard to get up in here under this seat uh, with the polisher. I know I'm not going to be able to do it up here either. I probably should take off the seat to do this correctly, but then to do it correctly, you'd have to take the whole bike apart and I'm not going to do that. So basically I'm just going to pop these side covers off on both sides and I will coat those off the bike. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and mask off all of this black trim because I don't want the polish. Uh, it can kind of stain that trim. So I don't want any polish to get on that black trim. So we're just going to come in here with some painter's masking tape and mask off these black trim areas like this. Okay, so just a quick walk around here. You can see I've got most of these areas masked off. What I'm trying to do is prevent any polish from just splattering onto the black, making it harder to uh, get off. I'm using frog tape, and I think if I had this to do over, I would probably get the Scotch 3M painter's tape. Uh, this frog tape seems to kind of pull up but it'll work fine for what I'm doing. Um, it's not a perfect masking job. It doesn't have to be. You'll see some places where it overlaps onto the paint, but I'm not gonna polish that close to the edge anyway. With a three inch pad, there's no way I can get that close to the end anyway, so. But I've got the saddlebags uh, trim masked off and I removed the rear fender for the same reason. I didn't wanna, you know, I wanted to have access down there. Okay, now I'm going over the paint. What I'm looking for are swirls, scratches, because I'm going to correct based on how serious it is. We have a little chip here that really needs to be touched up with some touch-up paint. That's the only paint chip I'm aware of. Paint actually looks pretty good. I'm just going to hit it with, most of it's going to be the perfecting cream. Uh, I might, there's a couple of spots I might hit with the, with the correction uh, cream. This is where I had some pretty serious marring on the paint when I bought the bike. But my brother was able to correct it. Now this is part of the Boss system, best of show. You'll notice the color on the label is orange, and that corresponds to their orange colored pad. This is a pad designed for the correcting cream. So I'm gonna use their pad with their uh, product. I'm gonna shake it really well. 
And then I'm using the Griot's. This is a three inch uh, polisher. They no longer make this particular model, but they do have a couple of other models that replace this, probably a little nicer than this one. And uh, basically we're just gonna stick this pad. It's like a hook and loop fastener. I'm gonna turn my dial. We have multiple settings that go all the way from one all the way up to six. I rarely, if ever, use six. So I'm gonna start out at level two and I'm gonna start out slow because I'm just gonna use this to spread the polish first. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a few, just a little bit of polish on here, about like that. And I'm gonna start smearing it around before I turn the polisher on. And this is gonna to help to prevent it from slinging off uh, in all directions once I get going. Now it's also important to know when you when you lift the polisher off of the paint to make sure you turn it off, turn off the polisher first, otherwise this pad will sling this polish all over the place. So I'm gonna put it on the paint and then I'm gonna turn it on, it's gonna be on level two and I'm just gonna further spread this polish around. I also want to point out my goal is to go in this direction first and then I'll come back and go the opposite way and I'm not putting any pressure on this I'm just letting basically the weight of the polisher do the work I'm not pressing down <laughs> Okay, now that I've got my polish spread around pretty good, I'm gonna go on up to level four, get a little more speed and see what we can do. Notice I left the polisher on the paint when I turned it off. Now I'm gonna grab my microfiber, wipe off some of this polish and kind of see how everything looks. Just visually, I can tell it's a huge improvement over what it was. I'm very, very pleased with that. That marring, that scuff on that fender, I can't believe that it did that good. It actually did this. So you use this correcting cream when you have deeper scratches, and I'm gonna be using the perfecting cream on the rest of the bike because I didn't see any other major areas other than on one of these side covers. I'm gonna look at that next. Now that I feel really good about the correcting that we've done on here with the correcting cream, I'm gonna move now to a yellow pad, which is part of the Griot's Boss system. As you can see, you got the yellow label and the yellow pad matches that label. And this is the perfecting cream. And what this is, is a much, much lighter polish, more of a refining polish, really enhances the gloss. And this will take out minor uh, swirl marks, very minor scratches, which is really all my Goldwing has uh, everywhere, but a couple of places. So in a lot of cases, especially if you have a brand new motorcycle, uh, this may be all you need to use. I'm gonna shake it up really good. And you can you can tell when you shake it, it's, it's a very, a much thinner liquid. It's not as thick as the correcting cream. So I'm gonna go over the entire bike with this perfecting cream. And as I go, I'll be wiping off with my microfiber. And uh, let's get started. Same, same process, we're going to put a few little dabs on here. It's a little bit more liquidy. I'm gonna start out on level two. You can see it kind of almost drips off the pad. It's so thin. I'm just gonna smear some of this around, get it all out. I probably put a little too much on that time. Probably got a little more on that pad than I needed.
Wow, I gotta say, that machine polishing step is the most time consuming and labor intensive so far. Now I understand why detailing professionals charge $1,000 to $2,000 to ceramic coat a gold wing. It's a fair amount of work. The masking of the trim took the most time, and I could have done a better job at it, quite frankly. Between the masking and polishing, it took just over three hours to complete. Of course, the better condition your paint is in when you start will dramatically reduce the amount of time to correct the paint. My recommendation, do this when your motorcycle is brand new. So let's summarize what we've learned. Wash and decontaminate the surface before machine polishing. Use a random orbital or dual action polisher like the one I use from Griot's Garage with a three inch pad. Check your paint using a bright LED for those areas that have heavy scratches or damage and will require the use of a compound like the correcting cream. Use a compound with a compound pad to remove those heavy scratches, imperfections, any etching or oxidation from those areas that require aggressive correction. Use the polishing pad with a finer polish such as this perfecting cream from Griot's Garage to perfect the paint and remove any hazing or marring left behind from the compound as well as any light scratches or swirl marks that might be in the paint. You can use this perfecting cream on the entire surface. It won't hurt your clear coat. Now you may need to clean these pads periodically during the polishing phase to remove a buildup of polish or do what I do. Just simply replace the pad with a clean pad halfway through the job. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate if you click that like button underneath the video. It really helps with our YouTube rankings. And of course, if you want to further support this channel and encourage more videos like this one in the future, check out that thanks button underneath the video. So I look forward to seeing you on the next Cruise Man's Ultimate Motorcycle Detailing Video Series where I'll actually be applying the ceramic coating to my motorcycle. We'll see you then.